Hello, everyone. We welcome you to our Sunday morning roundtable discussion. Today is Sunday, November 24th, 2019. We are recording from the Plainfield Independent Church, Plainfield, New Jersey, United States of America, and we welcome you all. Thank you for joining us. We'll start today with our morning prayer. From Christian Science versus Pantheism, page 15. May our Father, Mother, God, who in times past hath spread for us a table in the wilderness and in the midst of our enemies, establish us in the most holy faith, plant our feet firmly on truth, the rock of Christ, the substance of things hoped for, and fill us with the life and understanding of God and goodwill towards men. Mary Baker Eddy. Thank you. Okay, the watching point, Linda. Watching point number 120. Watch, lest having put your hand to the plow, you look back. The action and effect of truth is to uncover and destroy error. A plow turns over the topsoil and exposes that which has been hidden. The tendency of the human mind is to desire everything smooth on the surface, even though underneath there is hidden latent error. If a student is not ready to stick to the plow after it has begun to uncover error, and continue the warfare until air, the air is entirely exposed and destroyed. He is not ready to put his hand to the plow at all, in order that truth may uncover his hidden errors. He will look back with desire at the time when he enjoyed human harmony, even though there was hidden error in his thought. Once in a while you meet a student who complains that, after having come into Christian science, he has a great deal to meet that he never had before. This complaint proves that he is looking back with longing to the time when, before he put his hand to the plow, his human experience was comparatively smooth because air was more or less under cover or latent. Such a one, prove, such a one proves by this attitude that he is not fit for the kingdom of heaven, since he does not possess the necessary determination to press forward. End quote. Thank you. <clears throat> Comments on that? Good one. Very important lesson. Determination was uh, firmness of purpose and resolve, which I thought was within our story this week with the uh, young men. Thank you. Has this happened to anybody? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I was thinking, uh, I, I had to really watch it because what you thought was human harmony, you may be looking back a little bit, but it wasn't really harmony. That's what really stuck with me this week. Thank or you. when it's really harmonious and gets uncovered, boy, does it really just blow. And then it probably would have been much better to do it when it was small and little instead of waiting for it to expose itself. But it's very wonderful once it comes out and the healing starts to take place. It's if you're walking on eggshells with people and you're trying to hold it all together, it'll, it will blow up eventually. Yes. And it, then you always end up thinking, that I should have just done that. <laughs> Ten <laughs> years ago. <laughs> but then you really wonder, well, it wasn't really harmony because you were still searching something. There was still something missing. And yes, uh, it really did feel to me like everything. I, it seemed like I was losing everything. I was, it, was, it appeared worse or something. But the commitment, I think, I think uh, commitment to me is the word here that makes you go on no matter what. After a while, it was like, okay, well, where can I turn, really? There was nothing else. It, it, 
it really felt like no, there's nowhere else to go, so continue. And well, that was my saving process. Thank you. Yeah, for me, this is kind of encouraging because I've been having a lot of challenges in the last couple of years, and I look back and there weren't a lot. So instead of beating myself up, what am I doing wrong? I can say, gee, I must be doing it right that I'm that it's all coming up to be handled, and just right. to stick in there. And um, so that's very encouraging for me. So <laughs> it's exactly right. You're doing something right. If you're compromising and not really making the strides necessary, maybe you'll continue on in human harmony. You cling to it. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to get your whoever upset. Um, but if you're really doing it right and you're taking your stand, all hell can break loose. Usually does. But that's okay because you're ready for it. You've been prepared to meet it. And it's so much better to get it out than to have just lived with it and tolerated it or compromised with it when, when it's been there. So let it rip and roar. Better, better do it that way than have some huge thing at the end of the road because you've been tiptoeing around. For me, it's, Go ahead. Uh, for me, the hard part has been that we've been in Christian science so long, and uh, somehow I survived uh, all those years without God, and then to come uh, very quickly to the conclusion that Christian science really is the end-all and be-all and number one thing. And to have it laid out with Christ Jesus and Mary Baker, how do you, that understanding has been very difficult. But I think what's come to me lately to make that a little bit easier is, is finding places where Mrs. Eddy says that when people are mistaught, that it really clouds their, uh, you know, uh, spirituality, I guess one might say. Well, I'm trying to get over all that uh, back. Yeah. Back agony and stuff. This is also a good watching point because as we approach the, I'll call them holy days, either they're holy days or they're the bloody holidays, take your pick. <laughs> um, there is a tendency to look back for a lot of reasons, remembering past. And it's very important that we are in the present and only the, only the good was true about the past. Only the good lessons that were learned is, is true. Anything else? I mean, you should be able to look back without any bitterness or regret or as the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, not even the smell of smoke. And so, Linda, what did you write? Your, your forum was a bit on that. Yes, um, I was thinking about my thoughts are not your thoughts. And then that line in the science and health was be firm in your understanding that the divine mind governs. And that's Mrs. Eddy who wrote that. And that in your te the teaching last week was very clear that you had to be firm. And so I realized when I got caught up in thinking about some old memories and if I wasn't going to address it or be firm with it, that it was not going to be a good thing for me to, it was not, it's going to be destructive. So I came across something. Do you want me to read, Bicknell Young? Yeah, what Mrs. Eddy said. Yeah, Mrs. Eddy uh, is quoted to have said, and Bicknell Young writes this in 1937 College on page 12, quote, told about some friends calling on Mrs. Eddy one day, and a servant told them she was in the backyard. They went around the house and seen Mrs. Eddy seemed to be busy. They started away but she called them to come to her and then asked them if they knew what she was doing. They replied they did not. And she said, quote, I am going back in my memory just as far as I can remember and denying all the air that ever seemed to happen to me. It is a poor use of memory to review error, end quote. <laughs> Very true. 
a poor use of memory to recall error. And Big Nell Young is all he has said we we need to have a forgettery. So sometimes that's a good thing to for, <laughs> forgive and forget. So remember as we approach this time and keep this time holy and sacred. Observe it in quietude. Get into our Liberator magazine and don't get into the bloody holidays because it'll try you. Okay, our topic, our lesson subject today is soul and body. And our golden text, Jeffrey, you want to read that? Christ, excuse me. Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. It's so beautiful. It ties it all together. All that, all that the Christ taught is the savior of our body. And so whatever troubles you're having with your body, if you, if you are, the answer is in the Christ. And I thought it was very interesting. Oh, Florence, go ahead, please. No, I was going to say the definition of Christ really explains it clearly. You know, the divine manifestation of God which comes to the flesh to destroy incarnate error. And when all this is destroyed, then we see that the real body is reflected. I thought that was just perfect for this. Thank you. Yeah, and I looked up Savior, and that was one that saves or preserves, but properly applied only to Christ Jesus, the Redeemer, who has opened the way to everlasting salvation by his obedience and resurrection. He has been the Savior of men and the Savior of the world. And in the 1828 dictionary, it says there's really no other Savior. If you look up a more modern version, that might be the second or third Christ Jesus as, as a definition, but they think that there are other saviors. So that's why the 1828 is so important. And that was the dictionary that Mrs. Eddy used. Now, I thought Joe found something very interesting from Bicknell Young 1920 Association Address about this, about this. She wrote this on the forum. From uh, Bicknell Young 1920 Association Address, quote, <clears throat> It is most important that the church or body of Christ be kept pure in your consciousness, for thereby church members may find that the human sense of their own bodies is reciprocally blessed. In this way alone can the church eventually be made to show forth the characteristics of the divine body. The healing work and the church work are bound up together. They are held in one body. This body is the real church, the united demonstration of science. Such demonstration all must take part in. It also protects the church building just in the same way that human bodies are protected by correct metaphysical practice. This protection should extend itself so as to cover our church properties and our legal rights pertaining to them, so that they may be used perpetually and exclusively for the purpose of Christian science. There, was, there is no way of founding or protecting or perpetuating a Christian science church except through healing the sick. That was very interesting and very fresh look to it, including our church edifice, the building. Somewhere, and I believe it was Mrs. Eddy that said this, because, you know, all this talk, well, we don't need churches. Someone said, and I think it was her, well, when we... When we no longer need bodies, we will no longer need churches. Now, that applies to what he's saying here. And then it made me wonder, you know, if, if the organization, the BOD, had been obedient and hadn't suppressed all this wonderful literature, there wouldn't have been all these closings of churches. They would have been independent, and they, they could have understood this. 
and, and they would have thrived. And they would have thrived. Well, what a gem this is. Thank you, Joe, for finding it. She's listening. So um, the whole thing relates. And so you see, every time we have a healing of our body, we are healing the church. We are protecting its edifice. I mean, it all, it all goes together. And we are perpetuating the cause of Christian science because it's based on healing. It's very sad to me because I hear it often, the church is closing down to just a few. Someone told me recently, you know, the church, I guess it's Kansas City, anyway, someone in the church is extremely wealthy, and her testimony was about how she had given her son I don't know, all these gold pieces, and she was upset that she was being taxed for it, or, or some, some ludicrous thing to give a testimony. It was not a testimony of healing. It was not. It was not. In fact, it, was, it would make others feel terrible, roll a stone on their hearts. Anyway, these truths that we share each week our lessons that we work with, the healings all of us have during the week and testify to. This is what is keeping our church in the right definition of that. Awakening the dormant understanding. This is Eddie's definition in the glossary. And this is, this is a beautiful thought, how it covers everything, including the edifice. Never quite thought of it that way. Any other comments on that? Yes. Uh, yesterday I commented about how our church had fallen apart. And uh, one of the biggest factors, though, on why we didn't keep the money to try to reopen again, potentially, was because there was a practitioner that came into the area from, the, uh, from Boston, and uh, she said that the problem with hanging on to the money was that uh, everybody would do that and then there weren't any church members left to disperse it so the best thing for us to do is to give it to the mother church which is voted uh, <laughs> six to one <laughs> you know so we <laughs> right it's so it's so she was sent into the area uh, to gather up all the money i mean it was crazy how did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> We've heard that story many, uh, many times, Mike. Because now, it's true. And honestly, how dumb can we be? Seriously. <laughs> well, it, it, it shows the, the, how the human mind works. The human mind is fearful. It never has enough. So it covets. And it steals. No intelligence either. Oh. Right. It has no intelligence whatsoever of what is spiritual reality. And they certainly weren't expecting that the church would open up again. Mm -mm. No. That's right. it. Mm -hmm. right. And, and if <clears throat> the church had been demonstrating science and developing their, their spiritual sense, you can smell a rat. And if that isn't a rat, I don't know what <laughs> is. But you see, they were brainwashed, and they were brainwashed to believe whatever the organization tells you is the truth, and you bow down and you serve a false god. god. And, and so you multiply that time and time again. And, you know, if we hadn't gone through what we went through, who knows? Might have done the same thing, but, but our eyes were definitely awakened to this. But how, they have billions of dollars. Where is that going to go? Who's going to get it? Somebody, they're, they're vultures flying around. The last thing you want to do is give money to the BOD. And I say that unabashedly. <laughs> do not. Do not. In Isaiah, excuse me, um, it speaks of the branch of God's planting, and it's the importance of the individual individuality of man 
In the Comforter, second volume, it says, When Mrs. Eddy founded her church, she founded the concept of the branch church, which was to be completely individual unto itself, not having to answer to or be governed by a hierarchical, hierarchical church above it. <clears throat> it symbolized, symbolized individual man answerable only to God. Thank you. What page is that on? It's on page 238 of volume 2. Thank you very much. And that's how the 88th edition of the manual reads. And that's why the BOD changed it after her death and made that specific change in the 89th manual. To give them total control. So people who are going back and forth and thinking that there's, you know, some good in any of this, the more I learn, the more I study, the more I hear, I, I'm sorry, it, you know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down. It has to. What's amazing is that I read the 88th and 89th side by side, and I'm not going to pretend that I didn't miss anything, but uh, what Gary just spoke to amounts to less than one page. But the subtleness of that uh, changed everything. Thank you very much. It's very true. It's been very, very subtly done. And if you're not alert, you wouldn't even notice it. But here, this person, Yvonne Roos, I guess her name is, you know, here's someone objective coming to this conclusion, as did, as did most independent thinking scientists who were not brainwashed by the organization. And as I said, some of it is ignorant. Some of it is malicious. And I, I think, too, that um, there's a couple of things that come to mind. That when they went to the full text lesson, I think people stopped reading the textbook. And I know that when I went to Sunday school and association, there was not an emphasis on reading the textbook through. And so, I mean, I kind of grew up with an ignorance of what's in the textbook, you know, the, the, the sequence of the chapters. And so when I came to Plainfield, there was an emphasis on reading the textbook every day, like five pages a day. And now I'm reading the textbook through. But I, I think that if the movement isn't fully familiar with the textbook and not told also not told to give it out and to reach out to others. It's just going to fall in on itself. And it's just a crying shame. Um, then the other thing they could do with the billion dollars is um, print some pamphlets for children. I mean, I've been to reading rooms. There's nothing for the children. They've stopped printing things and they've stopped, you know, if you don't have a, a full set of, book for the little ones I mean it's just like just throwing the towel it's it's just so tragic um what's happened in Boston thank you yep yes yeah and I I know all the questions I've ever had and all the questions I know Florence has had people asking it, it's all in the textbook or prose works or the bible but the answers are there I mean, all those questions and answers, she answers just everything. People haven't read it. People have not read it. They need to read it. And they need to read it again and again and again and again. Especially when Debbie said she You're was still learning. Sorry. Okay, try again. Yeah, I was, especially when Mrs. Eddy herself said that she was still reading and learning from her textbook. Yes. Herself. Yes. What an example you that can is. Never for finish us. reading. <laughs> no, it's a constant unfoldment. Always fresh and new. You you gain more from it when you are in need, because you're you're thirsting, but. You can keep yourself that way. You should. As we talked about yesterday, we had a wonderful Bible study. And thank you again, Shahida, for that. If you missed it, you should listen. There was a lot in it. 
but that was one of it. Keep yourself um, listening to the Lord while, while he might be found. <laughs> Don't wait until the voice has gotten so faint. That, or, you, that you can't find him. <laughs> yeah, or some tragic thing happens that makes you think he's no longer there. Which, as Karen brought out, is never true. He's always there. But this is uh, what mm -hmm. what uh, Suzanne brought out, I think, is worth explaining. Because when a human organization takes over a good spiritual idea, what it does is it judges from a human standpoint. So people who have written for the periodicals, for example, have had their articles edited mm -hmm. up the wazoo they've had their articles refused even though they might be inspired so it discourages people from writing from their heart yeah. it discourages people from coming up with new publications for the children people live in fear it, 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 it's it's a horrible horrible atmosphere when the human mind takes over. And that is what has happened. It has basically choked off inspiration. Well, and, and Kratzer, he was excommunicated for writing Dominion Within and circulating it amongst his practice. Um, no, you, you're not supposed to do that. That's not authorized. Or I don't know what their line of reasoning is. Well, they don't know what their line of reasoning <laughs> Doesn't is. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah. Well, I remember when my kids were younger, and I was getting the Sentinel at that time, and they had different ones that were dedicated to kids. And I remember reading from them to my kids and thinking that it was so watered down, and I was just almost embarrassed to read what was in there. Right, because it gets edited by the human mind, and all the inspiration gets edited out of it. Well, thank you for that, because right. we will now have a section for children in the Liberator. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, I think somebody, um, one of our members uh, already, her little girl submitted a poem before, so. Yes, yep. so everyone can start thinking or writing for it or... You know, he's drawing pictures for it. Our resident artist at the table. Or, you know, we have other artists, Jeremy and Lillian and other people who know how to draw. Um, anyway, start thinking about that. That's very important. We'll have a section for it. We, we do have a children's website I that's just, connected yeah, yeah. Okay. that we've had two audios on now. And then we have some uh, poems, lots of poems and prayers and a little bit of teaching. And of course, Mrs. Eddie's 80th manual on how to teach children. So if you're okay. looking for something in the meantime. Yeah, Thank you. We, we don't advertise that much. And then the reasoning being because we want the children to feel free to, I mean, why, why don't we advertise more about our children's website? Is there a reason? Should we? Well, for a while we were building it, and then we were just... Well, it's coming up, so Why? we're working on it. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to mm -hmm. say that this week, my little granddaughter was in need of some support. And I went to the Sunday school, clicked on the web, on the icon for Sunday school, went to the menu, and I pulled up two prayers that I wrote for her. And she, her parents actually emailed me the next day because we left them by her on her desk. And she said she reads them at night and in the morning. Reads them at oh, night wonderful. with her parents and in the That's morning great. for school. So for any grandparents out there that would love to share with their grandchildren, those, those prayers are beautiful, just even sections of them. That is so wonderful. Helpful. Thank you. And I, I was there. I, I think just, we have enough there now for, you know, for it to be open. Yeah, it's open now. Okay, All right. good. Excellent. Good. Yeah, on the main page under the quick links, that's yeah. listed there. Mm -hmm. so. Wonderful. <laughs> well, we will continue to increase it, and, and uh, excellent. And, you know, our Sunday school, we have the finest teachers here, Florence, Linda, and Shardy. Um, covering and, all the ages. And Laura, when she's here. Yeah, and Laura, Laura <laughs> when she comes. So, um, anyway. 
And a lot of times the parents come down and listen with making sure that everything is okay, which it always is. So please feel free to have your children join in and listen or look at our website or the children's website. Oh, good. I'm glad that all came up. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, now, it's very interesting. This, this story of Daniel is very beautiful um, about the three Hebrew boys. But what Parthens wrote was very, very interesting to me. He quotes Psalm 2, 3, verse 3. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And don't we see that happening today? And that's what he is speaking to. Um, this scripture was fulfilled as God permitted the army of Nebuchadnezzar to overrun Israel. Helpless as a rudderless ship in a hurricane and to sweep its inhabitants through the imprisoning walls of a strange city in a godless land. Nebuchadnezzar's principal objective was to indoctrinate the young, preferably the most promising, influential among the citizens of Israel, to make them forget their identity, nationality, culture, most of all their God to assimilate them into Babylon's globalistic utopia. Sounds very familiar, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yes, and this to Elizabeth's point and to Suzanne's point, our children. The socialists have taken over the educational system in this country and are getting rid of God as much as they can. Parthens told me, you know, that there is these books that are published. He says a lot of our, our books are for the educational system are, are published in Dubai. Oh. And he said that, that there's a set of these books that are very much promoted, and they are anti-American. And Shardy confirmed it because she has a daughter teaching in the Philadelphia God bless her school system, and these are the books they use. Well, one of the major educational publishing companies was purchased by Dubai. Houghton yeah. Mifflin. Mm -hmm. Houghton Mifflin, right. Oh, yeah. Is now owned by a Middle Eastern company headquartered in Dubai. And they have gotten into the writing of these textbooks. So it's very rife with the Middle Eastern influence now going and, into our children's classrooms. So, you know, they'll take things and they, they just put a negative spin, an anti-American spin on it. We're always the bad guys. We're the, you know, doing terrible things. And so the children are growing up with this. Um, and I have people, you know, every morning I pray, dear Lord, please let me know whatever it is I need to know. And it's very interesting because people tell me things <laughs> during the day. Some things <laughs> I wish I didn't know, but I end up having and needing to know. And this happens to be one of them. And these people research very carefully. It's not just off the top of their heads. Plus, I have double. Linda is an incredible researcher, fact checker, checker all of this. But then you see why they're rising up with this also anti-God, anti-Christian. It's taught Christians are hate people. You know, they're full of hatred. So maybe there's some are, it's, you know, not everybody's you find perfect. Some everywhere. You find some everywhere. But the majority, Christ, Christ, Christianity, Christ teaching, God help us if that goes down the drain. Someone's full of hate. They're not Christians. <laughs> well, that Even is, if they say that they are. That is true. Thank you. But Just, it goes back to what you said before about um, how the dictionary now has different definitions for Savior. You know, it's all changing. That initial real definition. Yes. In, in the 28 dictionary, it's always about God. It always refers to God. Yeah, Webster would not be happy to have his name on this new stuff. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure that's true. Go ahead, Mike. An, ex an example was way back in the early 80s when my nephew was in uh, grade school. In his textbook was a thing that if you wanted to make money in business, that you should move your company to Haiti or something like that. I mean, that's exactly what it said. It was uh, so amazing. Wow. Outsource for cheap labor. Outsource for cheap labor. Okay. And that's the that's the whole thing. And then with my daughter, it was uh, that big farms are better than little farms. So it's mm -hmm. been, I mean, I'm just not saying who wrote this, but whoever's writing it was been putting these things into the uh, into the schools for ages. Mm -hmm. But the good news is we can counteract it all. And certainly when they are trained up properly in their homes, um, but also just in this knowing, that's why in the work, that's why there was a beautiful watch written by Shardy and Linda, and the date was August 29th of this past year, right before the children were going to school, that the only influence that they could have is the divine influence. I actually work with that almost every morning. And all of us should keep that in our prayers. It's most important, and that was a beautifully written watch. So Parthen goes on, Nebuchadnezzar's whole purpose was to break the connection between God and his people. Let us break their bands asunder. To replace that connection with another based upon an intelligence separate from God. History is replete with such scenarios and is repeating itself right here and now in the hearts of America's young and most malleable citizens, many of whom are men pleasers who do not know how to say no. To Nebuchadnezzar, men pleaser, according to the Webster's 1828 edition, one is who is solicit solicitous to pleasing men rather than pleasing God by obedience to his commands. But what was the outcome of the king's attempt to indoctrinate Daniel and his friends? And then he quotes from Mrs. Eddy's first edition, which actually we've sold so many now we're out of. Mm -hmm. Benjamin said we're going to have to get mm -hmm. some more. Mrs. Eddy says, quote, soul and body are inseparable and eternal. And this is the zinger. If one is indestructible, so is the other. Understanding this exempts man from every form of human bondage and captivity. Page 399. That is a zinger. Makes perfect sense. It does. This is why forget who it was now, but someone said you can never enslave a Bible reading nation. George it, Washington. No, it wasn't George it wasn't Washington. George. It was one of the forefathers, right? It was an early one, but yeah. not him. Horace Greeley, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. But, but, and that's why that good news that the Bibles are all over China now. And something else is very interesting. I never know if I pronounce his name his name right, pronounce his name right. Kent, Kanye, Kanye, oh, Kanye West, Kanye West, Kanye mm -hmm. West who is a rapper, but now he's found God. He's preached in prisons. He preached at a huge like a church. church. Yeah. And he also, I read, he's going to do, I think he said it was an opera or musical or something on Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> he's having a lot of revivals too. Yeah, revivals. He was going to send out a thousand Bibles to these young people. He ended up sending out 10,000. And he's highly motivated. He, he, yes. he is. And anyone who is taking this step, I mean, I think Justin Bieber, too, reaching these young people. I, don't, I must admit, I don't follow all that too carefully, and I can't say I listen to rap music too much. But I've, I've heard about this, and I'm, I'm greatly encouraged because he's re reaching a lot of people who need the Bible and the truth in the Bible. I so think there are many others doing that, too. Thank you. There are. Mm -hmm. Good. The more the merrier. Mm -hmm. The yeah. more, yes, the more outreach for young people, the better it is. And and to turn them from from all of this corrupt way of thinking to the and, truth. And, and why not? 
I mean, we're watching and praying every day. And a righteous prayer has a big impact. And this attempt to take the Bible out of schools, this attempt to attack Christianity, it's diabolical. It's wicked. And it's right that people, children of God, should rise up against it. This is a good thing. And that's why even in our country, as we talked about with the watching point, all this stuff coming out. Let it come out. Let it come out. People, you know, um, whether it's the witches or whatever, they can't suppress it anymore. They're out with all their fangs showing. So let it come out to be destroyed. The good thing. It might seem very unsettling and what in the world's going on, but it's also true. It's gone on through the ages as it is here with, with Nebuchadnezzar. And Parthens then says, like the eternal reliability and unchangeability of both the principle of mathematics and the mathematical con constants that reflect its alterability, it is the nature of God to remain unchangeable, relating to his image and likeness, his witness. Therefore, it follows that God's image and likeness endure forever, as well naturally reflecting that unchangeability in its relation to him. As his witness. This witness is what Daniel and his three friends so faithfully bore. And then what ends what end up what happens to Nebuchadnezzar at the end? Completely converted. He completely he, converted. He, he gets it. <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> yeah. He sees it. And isn't that wonderful? And then he tells all his nations to worship who? The one God. The one God. God. The Savior. So we never and, despair. And I like from the lesson that it said that he, he knew that they were ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he well, got and, then, it. and then Nebuchadnezzar makes Daniel head of the entire nation. The deep state, of course, doesn't like it. <laughs> and they conspire against Daniel. <laughs> but Nebuchadnezzar got it. Well, you always be aware of establishment. Establishment? A human establishment. Yes, a human establishment. It never gets it. Whatever it calls itself it has many names. But it always feels threatened by the truth. It always feels threatened by an inspired, uplifting higher thought so don't get the, don't dismay when it fights back or reacts or resists truth prevails like Jan said be encouraged by this happening yeah because yeah. something so, change said, is happening what Dale said that okay about mm -hmm. resistance now, to get into this science and health, which is so important, this is Eddie in, in number two. Only by losing the false sense of soul can we gain the eternal unfolding of life as immortality brought to light. And this one I love. The belief that existence is not contingent on matter must be met and mastered by science before life can be understood and harmony obtained. Do you believe that your existence is contingent on matter? Do you think that your heart, your, your stomach, your whatever is what gives you life? Are you alarmed when your body does some weird thing? <laughs> well, it's contingent on God. That is why we start the day with God is our life. And that's what we mean. And that's what we stick with. Your body, your organs, they function only because of God as expressions of God. But that's not where your life is. If you think your life is in that and you're checking it all the time, then you've you got to change. It's not science. 
I mean, that's what the world presents to you. But the world confuses effect with cause and cause with effect. And then, health is not a condition of matter, but of mind. That's one of my favorite ones, too. Your health, it's not a condition on, your ma on matter. Forget about it. Your health is, co is conditional on mind. That's why Mrs. Eddy says, watch your thoughts, not your body. Health is a quality of God, and it is unchangeable. Just like any other quality of God is unchangeable. It doesn't fluctuate. It's not, it's not feeling good one day and miserable the next. It's, it's a constant, just as God is a constant. But declare this for yourself. And then admit the common hypothesis that food is the nutriment of life. And there follows a necessity for another admission in the opposite direction, that food has power to destroy life. God, through a deficiency or an excess, a quality or quantity. This is a specimen of the ambiguous nature of all material health theories. They are self-contradictory and self-destructive, constituting a kingdom divided against itself, which is brought to desolation. And the zinger. <laughs> If food was prepared by Jesus for his disciples, it cannot destroy life. All of this stuff now, allergies, this food does that, gluten-free, gluten this, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know all of them. No, we're, we're giving, you're giving power to food. And it's all a human hypothesis. Yes. Someone ate a piece of bread that had gluten in it and it didn't feel so well. Oh, my gosh. Gluten. Hell, goodness me. Don't ever eat it again. It has all this power. <laughs> harm you. Gluten-free. Way to go. Now, we've been eating gluten since time began. That's what bread is made of, for heaven's sakes. We have one person that comes into the ceramic shop on on Mondays and the girls always bring in a whole like a meal like we'll have lasagna or we'll have chili or whatever and we all sit around and eat and we do ceramics and this one woman declares every week that she's allergic to pork and 99% of the meals have pork in them <laughs> and she just eats away and, and she's having a good old time but have, nobody tells her it's pork and she's fine <laughs> that's right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They'll say, does that have bacon in it or does that have yeah. that? <laughs> she just well, how many times? <clears throat> how many times do we hear about our food being contaminated by one thing or another? <clears throat> I mean, just the other day there was lettuce, <clears throat> and it's still off the shelf, um, being contaminated. That's right. And where is all that coming from? I, I that was never a problem when I was growing up. And now you turn on the news and there's something that's being taken off the shelves because it's being contam been contaminated. So, <laughs> My favorite thing to do when I run across those ads on YouTube or Facebook or something like that, and they'll show this stuff, uh, I just say, that's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it's fake news. It's all fake news because it can't be true. So much of it. So much of it. And, you know, we, we give it all this power. It's going to make you fat. It's going to do this. It's going to, whoever said that, that God said, I'm creating ice cream to make you fat. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of absurd. You can uh, uh, also correct me, please, if I'm completely wrong here. But uh, having been a farmer, I think one of the things is that we speak a lot here about having a prayer before the meal and yeah. uh, being thankful. Uh -huh. And I think that's the key. I think the difference is, is that in the past, it was uh, individuals like myself, and I loved making food and I wanted it to be the best. So even though I wasn't a God, uh, I didn't have God in my life, 
there was still that intent. And I think today it's not about, you know, there's a totally different intent. It's just to get it out there and make money. And uh, that reminds me of uh, also that I wanted to say earlier, but the funny thing about that full text lesson was that I always avoided it until I came to Plainfield. And uh, the lesson works fine here, even when I read it full text, because the intent behind it is proper. Thank you very much, much Mark. That is so true. And, and maybe a good way to end this, whatever we eat, to pray over it. So it can only bless us and to be grateful for it. Anyone else before we're, we close? And how important thought is in everything. Thought what you're thinking, friend. Yes. And th this is this is what this lesson is about. Soul and body. Your health is not in matter. It is in God. It is in mind. Okay. Hello? We're, we're going to close now. Sorry. Um, we, our bell is wrong. So Gary's gonna... This is from the article entitled Body by Mary Baker Eddy. January 1886. The term mind and body literally means God and man. For man is the expression of mind, and the manifestation of mind is the embodiment of mind. Therefore, man is God's body, and there is but one God. Body is therefore the aggregation of spiritual ideas, forever controlled and governed by the law of life, harmonious and eternal. This understanding of perfect body is the savior of the belief of body and is the law of recovery to any and every claim of error. Mary Thank Baker Eddy. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.